All right, what's going on dudes? Welcome back to Minecraft, where this time we'll be checking out a mod called Security Craft. It's one that I've been meaning to go over for quite a while, just hadn't gotten around to it yet, but here we are. So let's get started. The mod has a, a bunch of different blocks, tools, etc., that you're able to use to create base defenses, make cool traps, things along those lines. It's primarily aimed at multiplayer, but you can also do cool things with it in single player. So let's begin. All right, so first and foremost, we've got these laser blocks here. The way they work is you basically just set them apart from each other, and as long as they're in line, they form this laser force field thing. And if you walk through it, it emits a uh, redstone signal that uh, I, I have it hooked up to a <laughs> couple alarms that I forgot about. Um, that's another item. Anyway, yeah, you, you break the laser force field and it sends out a, a redstone signal, which in this case, I have hooked up to a couple of alarms, which you can hear loud and clear. So the alarms, uh, they, they emit that sound as long as they're uh, powered by redstone. So I think it pulses every two seconds or so. As long as there is a redstone signal going into them, they will be loud and, uh, and obnoxious. So if another player walks into your base, trips off the laser field, then you can know, um, most definitely. That's not an alarm, that's just a truck being loud and honking outside. Uh, so that is the uh, the laser block and the alarms and if you're interested in the crafting recipe We've got uh, the laser block is stone the redstone in the middle and the glass pane at the bottom and the alarm is uh, a Note block with some redstone and some glass around it. So yeah, that's the first thing All right, so now I, I it just looks like we have a chicken that really wants to help us out here All right. Well, I mean, I don't think you're gonna successfully <laughs> he's like Okay, I'm not gonna be able to trip any of these off fine. Anyway, so next up we got a bunch of different blocks that you can use for security access, essentially, like to open doors and stuff and, and things. So, um, first off, we've got a keypad. So when you place this down and you right click on it, it'll bring up uh, at, at first click a uh, keypad setup window. You can enter the code you wanna do. So one, two, three, four, a very, very secure password that in reality actually far too many people do use for things that are important. Don't use one, two, three, four as your password. Um, so save and continue. And then uh, we'll exit on out. Then, I don't know, walk up to it as if it were new. Boom, one, two, three, four. And hey, the door is open. Cool stuff. And it'll stay open for a couple seconds and then close automatically. All right, so I mean, it, it essentially just emits a redstone signal. I have a door next to it. So that's the uh, effect. If I do something incorrectly, then well, nothing happens, um, so I just have to uh, escape and uh, and retry. So that's the keypad. We've also got the retinal scanner, which is pretty cool. Um, when you make this and you put it down, it remembers what player put it down. Then you just walk up to it. Boop. Hello, Captain Sparkles. Hold on, let me increase the uh, chat size here. But yes, it does say hello, Captain Sparkles. It even it greets me. It's like a, it's basically an un indestructible lock mechanism that can't be bypassed because it's, you know, it's, it's, it knows my retina. Ah, uh, anyway, there we go again. And, uh, lets me through. All right, next up, we've got the key card reader, which, uh, basically allows you to set a level of security clearance. So in this case, why don't we set two, save and continue, and then we have to go on in here, grab a level two security key card, and we should right click, and it will let us through close automatically after a couple seconds as well. And then again, you can set it when you put it down to, to whatever setting you want it to be at. All right, so crafting recipes. Um, first and foremost, we have the retina scanner, which is a stone surrounding an eye of ender. Then we've got the keypad, which is just a bunch of buttons. Um, you know, a keypad, nine, nine buttons. And then we've also got the, uh, the reinforced iron door, which will show up again in just a second. Um, in sort of a different category I have laid out. And then we've also got the code breaker here, which has this sort of crafting recipe. It's expensive, but the way it should work is if I right click on the keypad with it, then it just breaks it. And uh, yep, that's why it's called a, a code breaker. So someone can make one of these and they can bypass your keypads pretty darn easy. Okay, chicken. Okay, chicken, you're gonna need to stop doing that right now. Good God. Uh, <laughs> 
God dang it, he would do that. Well, anyway, so that's the code breaker for you. And then over on this side, we've got the uh, the key card reader, which is a hopper surrounded by stone. And we've also got the uh, the key cards over here, which you can see they're different crafting recipes. So there we go. Okay, so next up, we've got the, uh, the password protected chest. So I haven't opened this one up yet. Uh, it's as if I just placed it down. It's gonna prompt me, same as the keypad for uh, a key code. We'll do 9876. Save and continue, and then escape. I'm walking up to it, 9876, and it opens for us. So just another application for the password protection thing, and that crafting recipe is a chest surrounded by a keypad and some iron blocks, and then you've got uh, one of these. So pretty nifty. I haven't actually checked if the code breaker works on that as well. If it does, then uh, it does not. All right, fancy that. So you're safe from the code breaker in the, uh, the password protected chest, just not with the keypad. So bear that in mind, I guess, if you're building some base defenses. All right, so over here, we've got the unbreakable blocks, all the reinforced blocks. So reinforced iron bars, reinforced glass panes, reinforced stone, a reinforced iron fence gate, and a reinforced iron door. If I swap on over into creative, boom, and I grab something like a, a diamond pickaxe. If I swap over into creative, I'm good. Uh, if I swap into survival, I should say, with my diamond pickaxe and try to break it, it's not gonna do anything. Unbreakable, even the glass. Unbreakable, 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 unbreakable. That's why I was using it over here because this door cannot be broken um, unless you use this little tool. It's the universal block removal remover, but it only is universal if you're the one who put the blocks down. So if I want to remove something here, then I can just use this thing, or sorry, right click on it, derp, and then it'll just pop it off, and, uh, and I'm good to go. Now it, it should, according to the form, remember, I can't really test this at the moment because I'm the only one here, um, it should remember who actually placed it down and only work if you are that person, so someone else can't just make the universal block remover and, uh, you know, just destroy things. <laughs> Otherwise, it wouldn't be much good, would it? So that is the universal block remover, the, uh, the recipe for that being shears plus two iron ingots. That would be a pretty cheap recipe if anyone could just make it and then start breaking down your base defenses. But a right click will uh, remove any unwanted blocks. If you place something down incorrectly, it's not the end of the world. All right, cool. And then crafting recipes for that stuff is uh, iron bars surrounded by iron, door surrounded by iron, glass pane surrounded by more glass, which for some reason <laughs> makes it unbreakable. Don't know why, but whatever, don't question it. Reinforced stone is stone surrounded by cobblestone, and a reinforced iron fence gate is fence surrounded by iron ingots. So there we go with that stuff. All right, so next up, I need to switch on back into creative. I'll have to switch back one more time in a second, but we've got the uh, the portable radar. So the way this thing works is you place it down and uh, it'll start giving you periodic updates if someone is within 50 blocks of it. So in chat, it says Captain Sparkles near portable radar. If I go 50 blocks away, it'll stop giving me those notifications. 50 blocks is a pretty fair distance though. So probably have to get on over here and then it should stop giving me notifications, which it has. Again, if I get within 50 blocks again, it'll start giving me notifications that uh, I am within it, but it would apply to any other player. So if someone was trying to break into my secret base stash and I had one of these in there, it would let me know that someone is trying to do that, which is pretty handy dandy. And then if you want to substitute the coordinates for something, I don't know, more uh, name-ish, you can name, <laughs> that was a terrible way to describe it. Uh, you can name it to, I don't know, secret chest base thing. So you can rename a name tag, and then if you click on the portable radar with the name tag, it'll consume it, and then it will say, Captain Sparkles is near your portable radar named secret chest base. And uh, then you know exactly which one is being triggered, and you don't have to remember coordinates, it just makes it easier on yourself. So um, yeah, pretty nifty. All right, so I'm gonna destroy this because I don't need the chat notifications anymore. Um, let me throw this back as well, and now, we have got the uh, the inventory scanner. So this one's pretty cool, actually. The way it works is uh, you have these different slots in here that you can put items in. So right now, uh, it's under check inventory, and if it contains, if if my inventory contains one of the items that are in here, it will delete that item from my or whatever player's inventory. So in this case, 
I figure, okay, well, I don't want someone getting in here who has a diamond sword who's going to kill me. So I'm going to put diamond sword in there as a prohibited item. And then if I walk on through, you'll notice diamond sword in my inventory should get cleared immediately. Now it'll also do the same thing if I try to like throw the diamond sword onto the other side of the force field. It'll delete it. And same goes for any other prohibited item that, that I want to have in there. So there's that. But then on the other hand, you can toggle it to a different setting. So we can change it to emit redstone signal. So say I want to have like a secret item that I have to carry in my inventory that acts as like a password to get into a base. So for example, uh, uh, spawn slime or spawn dead Jerry if I renamed it to spawn Jerry. So I put it in there and then I have the other one in my inventory and now when I walk through, it's going to emit a redstone signal that for some reason isn't opening the door. But you can see the redstone signal nonetheless. So I don't know why the door is being weird. But uh, so if I walk on through, so the redstone's done. Walk on through, it uh, it emits a signal. Silly iron door. Anyway, so that's the idea. You got two different modes there that you can toggle between for secret password to get in item thing or clear uh, part of a player's inventory. And you have up to, uh, up to what is it, 10 different items you can put in there. So, yep, yep. Um, and then the, uh, the crafting recipe for that is uh, stone around a laser block with an ender chest as well. And then I just realized I forgot to go over the other uh, crafting recipe for the radar, which is uh, redstone torch, iron, and redstone. So there we go, sorry about that. All right, next up, the moment you've all been waiting for, booms. So we've got all of the different types of mines over here, and I'm not talking about mines that you go and find new resources in, I'm talking about the mines that go kaboom. All right, well, let me fetch all of them out uh, of my thing, my chest over here. Okay, and I'll also grab the other stuff that's useful for them, and let's demo it. So, dirt mine. Well, I bet you can take a wild guess as to how this works, and I'm gonna go far, far away. Um, if I put it down, I'm so sorry, chickens, and then I try to destroy it, whether in creative or survival, I'm just gonna do creative so I don't die every time. I destroy it, kaboom, poor chickens. They died for science. Um, and then same with cobblestone, kaboom! And same with sand, same with diamond, same with stone, it's, it's same story, just lots of kabooms over and over and over again. Um, they all do the same thing. But then we have a, a couple of variations over here. Um, so, first and foremost, we have the track mine. So let me fetch the other stuff out of here because this is all gonna be relevant. So track mine, you can take a wild guess. If I set up some track over here, and then I put down a track mine over there, put down a mine cart, and hop on in, kaboom. You hit the track mine and uh, it blows up. So, yep, there's that. And then after that, we've also got the furnace mine. With the furnace mine, uh, if you attempt to access the furnace, it blows up. That was a right click, not a left click. So there's that. And uh, then we've also got the actual mine looking type thingamadoo hickers, uh, which are, and I just completely forgot to show the crafting recipe for <laughs> some of these things, but uh, I'll get back to it in just a moment. Um, so if I put the bouncing Betty down, it, uh, Walk up to it and it pops up in the air. I remember playing Call of Duty World at War. That was just the worst thing ever. It was just that inevitability of when you walk up, you don't see the bouncing Betty, and then, oh, it just pops up in your face and you're dead. Unless you manage to uh, lay down in time, which was rare, but it worked. Um, and then we've also got just your standard mine, which if you walk over, it just blows up and stuff. But then there's also a tool that you can use to manage the uh, the regular mines. And I'm gonna go fetch that so you can see how it works. Um, oops. Okay, so apparently right clicking on a chest with the mine is not a good idea. Well, uh, that's okay. We can just grab it from over here. Uh, so this is the mine remote access tool and you can use it to manage your mines Remotely, whoops. <laughs> okay, so if I put this, I'll just put a few of them down. Uh, Cause, God damn it, God dang it! I need to stop doing that. I really do. Okay. Um, so if I put these down and I right-click on it with the mine remote access tool, I can 
I can get these all logged into it. And if I walk far away, I can activate, deactivate, or detonate them from remotely. So if I detonate, or I deactivate them all in here, then they turn to green, it's okay, I can walk over them, I can destroy them, it's not a big deal, they're not gonna blow up. Um, on the other hand, say I want to go in and uh, I wanna reactivate them now, so I can activate, and it gives me a menu of which ones I wanna toggle, and we're good to go. Now they're activated again with the, uh, the red square that they've got on them indicating that kaboom. Uh, and then, finally, if we want to just detonate them, we can uh, also do that. Boom! And there we go. Cool stuff. Now, additionally, you've got uh, a couple things that you can do without that. So if you just want to diffuse a mine, you can right-click it with shears, it'll diffuse it, and then if you want to relight it, you can click it with flint and steel, and it'll re rearm. That's the word I'm looking for. So you got a couple commands there as well if you don't have the mine remote access tool at your disposal. So that's basically it when it comes to mines. Uh, be careful with them, uh, quite clearly, so you don't blow things up that you don't want to blow up. Uh, anyway, crafting recipes, here we go. So mine remote access tool, diamond, gold, redstone torch, stick, and then over into the different window, mine is like so. Uh, dirt mine is like so, just dirt next to a mine. The same story goes for, whoops, all of these other ones over here as well. I guess you're gonna need a silk t touch pickaxe if you wanna do it with diamonds. Uh, furnace mine, bouncing Betty is, uh, is a different uh, crafting recipe. And then track mine is also a different crafting recipe. So there we go. That's all the different mine variations for you. And then, Last but not least, we have a few different things over here, one of which kind of got messed up from my messing up. Uh, let's do this, and then hopefully that'll solve the issue. Well, I guess it's not really a big a big deal. I just wanted to have my nice little secret under base area thing, which, oh, it blew up the signs too. Well, anyway, so we've got, uh, we've got a bucket of fake water, cage trap, and a bucket of fake lava. So basically, let me switch on over into uh, into survival mode here. So the crafting recipe for fake lava is a potion of instant healing over a lava bucket. And then I can jump on in here and, uh, oh, what do you know, I'm fine. All good, can swim on out from the bottom. And uh, this can be used as like a, you know, secret base entrance that no one's gonna think to actually jump into because it's a pool of lava. And why would anyone jump into a pool of lava? So. Fake lava there, that's cool. Then on the other hand, we have fake water, which does bad things to you. Potion of uh, harming combined with a water bucket and uh, very, very rapid death. Yep, good thing I got the bed. Um, actually, earlier I almost lost all of this because <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to test out the fake water not realizing how quickly it would kill me. I thought it would be like lava and I'd be fine. And I instantly died and almost couldn't find this whole area that I had set up, which would have been a bummer. Uh, anyway, so fake water. And then finally we've got uh, the cage trap, which doesn't have a texture at the moment, but it still works, so if I jump on it, then uh, I am, well, captured. It sends a chat notification so that whoever put it down knows uh, what's up, and they can go collect their prisoner, and uh, it's also the, uh, it's the reinforced, um, reinforced iron bars, so you can't actually get out. So, yeah. Um, well, Anyway, that's basically it for security craft. Quite a bit of stuff here. Um, so again, this is all, all can be like combined in different ways in order to make cool bases and traps and things. And uh, it's pretty nifty, I think. So pretty cool mod. If you're interested in any more, check the link in the description. Hopefully you've enjoyed though. If you have a rating would be uh, super very much appreciated. And uh, I guess that's it for now. So thanks very much for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.